There's a bit more progress being made for the next hard fork. This is Chang hard fork number two. Yeah, that's right, number two. We had the first one only just recently, but the teams have been working hard on the next Cardano node version, version 10, and we'll also see some improvements in there in interoperability with other chains. So we've got some parameter changes that are coming up and some governance actions to look at as well. Catalyst is also in full swing as well with Fund13 in community review stage at the moment and we'll have a look at some key dates around that all that coming right up hey everyone i'm peter buey and welcome back to the learn Cardano podcast it's been a little while since i've uploaded a video i needed a break and you know you need some rest from the crypto space especially with so much happening and that is certainly the case in the Cardano ecosystem. There is so much happening at the moment. I haven't even watched all the videos from the Cardano Summit yet, but I will get around to it and give you guys an update and some uh, highlights that uh, I've picked out from the summit itself. But let's go through some of these highlights here. And this is the next version of Cardano nodes. So this is the software that runs all of the blockchain nodes out there. We're up to version 9.2.1 at the moment. That's what I'm running on my Cardano stake pool. But version 10 has been released and it's ready for mainnet. So we're going to see this start to be rolled out on the preview and test net networks very, very soon. And they will perform a hard fork on that to test it and make sure everything is working just fine. So Samuel here has put out the notification. You can see this on GitHub as well on the Intercept GitHub repo, and you can start downloading it and trialing it out on the preview and pre-prod networks. So if you are a Cardano node operator, do check this one out, see if it will run for you on the preview and uh, pre-prod networks and uh, give the team feedback if there's any issues. Hopefully this one is a simple update as well. I'll be updating my own state pool after uh, this is all ready for Cardano production mainnet. So this is all leading up to that big constitution and convention in Buenos Aires later this year in December. I think it's the first or second week of December. I can't remember the exact dates, but you'll be able to uh, follow along with that. There's a lot of people heading to that uh, convention or the uh, representatives from all the workshops from around the world to contribute to the final ratification of the constitution. So it's going to be a really interesting time for the Cardano space. Now with the hard fork, we've also started to see some more governance actions that are coming on chain. This one here that you can see, this is around the cost model parameter change for Plutus V3. Now this is a fairly technical uh, aspect around it. So if you don't understand what's going on here, uh, throw it through ChatGTP and it will help you summarize and get a better understanding of exactly what is going on here. I did have a look at this on the GovTools website early today. But uh, coming back to it, it seems to have uh, something gone wrong with it after the epoch change. So uh, I may have to come back to this one and see what's going on. But I did manage to grab it and put it through chat DTP. And this is the summary for you guys. So this cost model, the Plus V3 cost model is to support 12 new bitwise and cryptographic primitives that are upcoming in Chang2 hard fork. These changes include bitwise operation enhancement, cryptographic functions like ripe md160 hashing and other primitives intended to improve interoperability with bitcoin and ethereum the cost model update will not alter existing settings but will provide resource allocations for the new primitive as verified through cardano's standard benchmarking and security procedures this proposal is consistent with cardano's governance standards and can be reverted if needed by restoring the current cost model now, when you hear this, you immediately think, okay, it's going to cost me more to run these Plutus V3 smart contracts in terms of transaction fees. But the actual cost here is around the CPU and memory costs for the new primitives. So each new Plutus primitive has a specific cost model for CPU and memory usage based on benchmarking execution times. So these are some of the details here. If you want to dig into that, I'll put links down below for you guys so you can get a little bit more of an understanding of what this is all about and how the costs model is actually put in place. Now we also have another governance info action that is open for voting at the moment. And this is all around being a litmus test to see if the K parameter should be increased. Now this K parameter defines how many state pools out there in the Cardano ecosystem can mint blocks or are required to mint blocks. I should be a little bit more specific there. So currently K is set to 500. So 500 state pools are needed. And doubling this to a thousand, uh, which I believe is the 
uh, requested amount uh, will allow a lot more pools to be um, able to mint blocks in the ecosystem. Now, the thing here is that currently the saturation limit for all the pools is around that 74.5 million ADA. And increasing this to 1,000 will then decrease this number to half that. So just over 35 million ADA per pool. So this will hopefully, the idea is, move that ADA delegation from wherever it is at the moment to one of these smaller pools out there that doesn't have much delegation. So the idea is that it will spread to all the smaller pools and then allow more uh, state pool operators out there to start minting blocks. Now, I did have a little look into this one as well, and I did uh, some napkin math around this, and I will do a blog post around this one as well. So uh, you guys can see how I'm voting for this one here uh, in regards to increase of K. Again, I'll put that down below and also link it to my Learn Cardano podcast website at learncardano.io. You can see all the write-ups for governance actions there. Now, this is only an info action. It isn't something that's going to be uh, enforced by a parameter change itself, but uh, this will give everyone an idea of where everyone is sitting with this one at the moment. Should this K parameter be changed and allow for more smaller state pool operators out there to start potentially minting blocks. Now, if we actually have a look at the numbers itself at the moment, uh, the, or the, everyone that's actually voted at the moment, it's a little bit hard to see without any uh, commas here, but we've got 100 million voting for yes. We have 500 million abstaining from the vote. And the no votes here seem to be winning with 200 million voting for no. So it seems the D reps are voting for no at the moment. If we have a look at the SBOs themselves, we have 21 million voting yes, and we have, I believe, 7.5 million voting no. So it's interesting to see which direction the votes are going here at the moment, but I'm pretty sure we'll see more debate around this after this, uh, the date for this one is passed. Uh, I believe the date for voting for this one is on the 11th of November, so it ends then. Now, if you don't know what you're voting for in regards to all these governance actions, I am actually a DREP, a delegate representative, and if you are interested in delegating your wallet to me, the ADA doesn't leave your wallet, just the voting power for it is allocated to myself and I can vote on your behalf. This is my DREP ID here, so whatever wallet you're using or if you're using the GovTools website, you can find my profile by typing in that uh, or copy and pasting the DREP ID and then you can delegate your wallet to myself. Now, um, I'll, put, I'll post all my governance action votes online on the Learn Cardano website, and uh, you can find all video tutorials about how to actually delegate on my other channel, my tutorial channel. Again, links down below for you guys. Now, we just happen to have Fund 13 of Project Catalyst kick in at the moment as well. So there's a lot of community reviews being done right now. But this is a reminder for you guys that you can start registering your wallets for Fund 13 voting. If you registered in previous round and you still have your uh, voting QR code and pin, you should be totally fine. You should be able to restore that on the voting app if the voting app changes again and then continue to vote within Fund 13. But in Fund 12, a couple of people had to reinstall the Catalyst app and as a result, they didn't have their QR code or their PIN code and couldn't re-register on the app itself to do voting in Fund 12. I was one of those people, unfortunately. So if you were one of those uh, unlucky users, you couldn't vote. But if you, if you re-register now, you will hopefully save that QR code and that PIN code that you create during that registration process and you'll be able to restore it in the Catalyst app for voting this fund round as well. So this, this is a really good way to help support some of the projects out there that are building on the Cardano ecosystem. The majority of them do have catalyst proposals and it's kind of a, the, the lifeline to keep them running at the moment. So if you really want to support your projects out there that you love using all the time, check out their catalyst proposals, register for Fund 13 and give them a vote this round so they can keep on building and providing value to the Cardano ecosystem. We're starting to see some really interesting proposals come out at the moment as well. If you do have a proposal and you want some airtime, please reach out. I've put a post out. You can comment below if you can't DM me directly, but DM me and I will uh, try and schedule in a time for you as well so that uh, we can talk about the proposal and see what you guys are contributing to the Cardano ecosystem. There are various key dates that you need to be aware of. So the voting does begin at the end of November on the 28th. 
and it will go until mid-December on the 12th of December. So this is the crucial time for voting and any interviews and anything that uh, needs to be needs to be done needs to be done before that time so uh schedule yourself in and um, i'll i'll see what i can do for you guys now that is it that's all i have for you guys for this particular update it's all around governance it's all around voting all around these governance actions that are coming up in the space i'm looking forward to seeing what happens next month in december with this uh constitutional convention there's a few more constitutional workshops in the, the pipeline at the moment that are happening at the moment to contribute to that uh, convention, but we should see that all come into place and the next Chang Hard Fork happen around that time as well. Super exciting stuff. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you hit that thumbs up, like, subscribe on your way out. I'll see you guys in the next video.